We're going. Awesome. Hello, everybody. It's uh, Kyle and Chase here from the Lead Tool. Uh, getting things going after a couple of minutes there, but I uh, want to thank you for uh, sticking around and checking us out today. Uh, we got a pretty cool topic to talk about. Before we get into that, if you have any questions, anything like that, you want to comment, give us a like on this video. Uh, chat into us on the actual Facebook page. We'll be monitoring it, so we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, otherwise, feel free to check us out too on all of our social media channels from Twitter to Instagram, uh, our YouTube channel, obviously Facebook, all at the Lead Tool. We'd love to hear back from you. We post a lot of great content on all of those channels, so uh, feel free to check it out. But uh, without much further ado, uh, we got a pretty awesome topic today that, you know, we get this question a lot. You know, a lot of people don't necessarily know what it means or what the benefits are, or you know, from your current vendor uh, and, and technology stack, what it may be doing to your business. So uh, we're gonna be talking about integrations, what it means for you, uh, you know, things you're looking for in terms of talking to your vendors, even when you re uh, evaluate your current stack, you know, some of the things that you need to be asking them. So I know it's something we are very uh, integration friendly, and honestly, quite frankly, a, a lot of modern technology today is integration friendly. Uh, you know, just looking at some of the major players within the you know the industries from the Googles to the HubSpots, you know, things of that nature, they're all integrated with pretty much anything out there. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's weird just kind of with industry-specific stuff, and this is the real downfall of industry-specific is, is honestly, they're so far behind. And they, they lock you in to, to that product, right? Yeah, and it's, you know, and you think about all the people we talk to that won't, do anything because they're like, well, it doesn't integrate with this, you know, Windows server system that's in my warehouse. And yeah. meanwhile, I just was reading the other day that a lot of the e-commerce com companies, which are all venture capital backed, are moving into brick and mortar. Yeah. So they're taking their tech and and coming in. So, um, you know, I think uh, it's it, 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 with these industry vendors that really have, they haven't updated their software, a lot of them aren't on the cloud. Um, or have been telling you that they're moving to the cloud yeah. in the last 12, 18 months. Some of them we've heard have been talking about it for three, four, five years. Yeah, so. and it's just they're just not there. Yeah. Um, and they, I don't, I, I don't know if they don't know how to get there, or they don't just, you know, it doesn't matter. But either way, like vendors like that are really holding businesses back, particularly the, the small businesses. Yeah, I mean, it's 2017. Yeah, if you're none not, of this is an excuse anymore. Right, and and so you know, I, I think that it's really troublesome when you see that you know you have people who businesses will refuse to buy new software because they're old, you know, whatever on-premise yeah. server installed software um, can't integrate with modern software. And, 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 from, and it may have been cutting edge back, you know, five years ago when you bought it. Uh, nothing on premise was cutting edge five years ago. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe like twenty years ago. Sue I mean the stuff me. the stuff we see though. I mean it literally would have been cutting edge like twenty years ago. Yeah. Um, the the cloud has been around for over. And, and, and to give that some perspective, like talk a little bit about what that means from a technology in terms of how fast or how slow. It, it, it innovates. Well, so technology's on this curve that goes, like, it's growing exponentially, right? That's why... It's like a hockey stick. Yeah, it's the same. So, like, when you, when we, and when we look at all this stuff, it, it's like, it doesn't matter kind of how big the company is. I think some of the other things we see is you get these industry hacks that, like, they, they operate a facility and they think that they can, like, build something for the industry and they hire some, you know outsource agency you get that run you got someone who's going to ship you software in a box run um yeah. but really technology is evolving so quickly that um you know everyone's on the cloud now the cloud born companies are way far ahead because we were we we're all engineered to integrate with everything yeah um, it's kind of the flexibility of being on the cloud yeah and i wrote uh uh blog post a while ago called the all-in-one software solution is dead and it is i mean it's deader than a door now well it sounds um, it's pie in the sky right because you know all in one it sounds is, it is pie in the sky um it's it absolutely amazing. Pie sounds in amazing, the sky. Yeah? And, and but the the big thing is is that you know this the stuff particularly when you talk about software systems that are like installed on a server that was current in the 80s yeah so cloud computing has been around since the 90s. Like mm -hmm. if you go back in history, 
the launch of the first like big cloud companies were all like late nineties. Yeah. Um, well, it really took off with Amazon in the early two thousands. Yeah, and Amazon actually is technically a late nineties company. Yeah. Um, so it goes back like really, really far. So it's not that like, oh, I've got this technology in place. It's it, uh, so I'm fine. It's like, wait a second, like I might not be fine. Yeah. Um, and I would, you know, I would push my vendors. Like if your vendors aren't moving you forward and they're not evolving, they're holding your business back because if their technology is not evolving, the technology your business has isn't evolving. And you're, as a result, your business is stagnant. And that's really like not good. I know a lot of people, like particularly in the building material space, feel like business is booming right now. But like retail in general is in a recession, and that's going to hit everyone. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like they're not immune. The the um, and it's not just like pure play e commerce that's the problem. Yeah. It's there's consolidation. So every year since 2005, there's been a reduction in the number of specialty retailers in building materials. There's just, it's gone down, like I think we were talking about it the other day, flooring's gone down from 15,000 yeah. to 9,000. Yeah. Um, you know, the bigger players are eating up more yeah, the market they, share because now. The home centers in particular. Right, and we see that a lot too because we, we, we've got some great like small business customers that are, you know, two, three person shops, the mom and pops, but um, on the whole, those are the organizations yeah. that are slowest to adopt technology. Yeah. Um, and that's why they like and statistically the census has the data on it um, the the contraction is in the the uh, smaller yeah. businesses yeah so technology is increasing at an increasing rate and if if you're you know locked into a solution that doesn't integrate with you know other software that you need to run your business whether it's um, you know stuff like a content management platform that integrates with Google Analytics or you know, email marketing, CRM, um, County, all that stuff. Inventory. Yeah, inventory. Like we did e-commerce yeah. on the podcast last week. Like modern inventory systems will push your inventory out. Like yeah. stop paying for Google AdWords, do local inventory ads. Your yeah. ROI will probably be a hell of a lot higher. Um, so these integrations really like open up a world. It exposes your software to the world, which helps you expose your business to the world through your yeah. software. Um, so which, it, which, which, which in, in turn allows you, you know, there's so many different technologies for whatever specific function of your business that you're looking for. You know, whether it's industry specific or not, there's a ton of stuff out there. You just got to look for it. But yeah, what, what, what this API does for those of you guys that, you know, don't necessarily know what API means or what it does, it's just, it, you know, I, I call it fancy tech talk. That basically means this technology can talk to this technology and you don't have to duplicate entries, if you will. So, you know, coming back and circling back to, to my point with the different technologies available in your stack, what it allows you to do is choose the software that is best for your company for that specific function that you're trying to essentially Yeah, yeah it's, cool. it's, cool. it's task specific. Like if you're gonna be on an F1 track, you want a Formula One car. If you're gonna be on an oval track, you want a NASCAR. Yeah, or, or an indie car. What it's Dale so Junior. You Woo. you really want stuff that that it's it's kind of like and the best one that I always hear is people are always talking about their POS system, and complaining about it. Get Square for the yeah. love of God. It's free. Like it's it's free and you know it's like well it says on their on their site it's you know their rates. Well, think about picking up the phone and calling yeah. them if you're doing a yeah. lot of volume. And, like, and, and to put it in your in, in in context for you, you know, for those of you that are listing your products on your website. If somebody calls in and, and, and is buying a specific amount of volume, I'm willing to bet you're probably going to give them a price cut or a deal of some sorts, things of that nature. It's the just, same thing. Just with ask. Tech. It's the same thing. Like think about your business. What happens in your business? You can then replicate that in whatever you're. Yeah, and P POS is great because bringing people out like on the floor, um, not having to wait for a register. I mean, if your POS is chained to some on-premise server. Like when you got to walk from this corner of your store back to why the would why wouldn't you get Square? Like your people yeah. can swipe credit cards on an iPad, on yeah. a, on a, any mobile device, on an Android. Yeah. It's kind of you know it's it's crazy when you think about that part of it. Um, so you know Square, I think is a wonderful solution. There's a, a few great inventory systems that are and, out there. And, and what he just said may not sound like a big deal. You know, walking from one end of your store back to the counter. Or being able, you know, conversely what he said, you know, being able to swipe 
on the spot while you're talking to somebody for whatever their purchase is. You know, it may not sound like a big deal on the surface. It really is. It's it, not it a big deal to you. It's a big deal to them. And like again, there's this. It's all in the context of the customer experience. It, what do you do? What 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 makes you different? Right. And so like the technology really helps you serve your customers better. Yeah. And I would say that if I have to do duplicate data entry to sell more and have the because I'm delivering a better experience for my customers, you can do fine. It. Um, all too often when it comes to technology, businesses are centered around what's best for them. Me, me, me. What about my people? Rather than being like, what technology do I need to deliver for my customers? Yeah, it, it, That's it, what this is really about. And technology's not going away for you people out there to just love your pencils, love your paperwork. I've had the same process for 20 years. Uh, I, I got news for you. Technology's here to stay, so get off your ass and get over it You know, at the end of the day. Yeah. The sooner you adopt it, the sooner you embrace it, the sooner you're going to start reaping the the, the businesses that are, are are that are embracing it are crushing it. Yeah, you know. So. And these APIs will allow you to choose a software that your people will find user friendly or have the ability to use, but at the same time not sacrifice the functionality on the back end to deliver the inventory or the accounting or whatever maybe. Yeah, and you'll hear a lot of times a lot of the, the old school legacy vendors will say, oh, well, we've got an API and then they're going to charge you an arm and a leg for it. Like, that was a point that I was going to bring that's, up. That's like today. that's also preposterous. Like This stuff should just be, it should be engineered to be integration friendly. Um, I was on site yesterday with a customer um, in, uh, in commercial furnishings and furniture um, and he was asking about integrations and I was like, our policy is generally like, if there's an API, we'll build an integration. Um, I mean, so, 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 so for, 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 for a dealer or a yard that is, you know, reviewing their technology stack and talking to these tech companies, you know, and they ask, obviously you want to ask this question, you know, do you charge for API? You know, and they say, yeah, you know, what should your response be? Well, I mean, if it's if it's like an on-premise, if it's first of all, if I'm a yard and I'm evaluating my technology stack and I'm talking to a vendor who isn't on the cloud, I'm getting rid of that vendor. Yeah, like plain and simple. Um, it's just what have you been with them for ten years? I don't give a shit. I don't care. Like why? You know, like when when and this is he he ran by the way. Chase comes from the lumber industry. He ran a. Oh, oh, I didn't run it. Dan, Dan ran Dan it. Ran I just, it. I, I, I worked there, but, um, but Pretty yeah, I mean, like it's, yeah, it, it's one of those things where I don't, I mean, I don't care because I'm thinking about what's best for my customers, you know? And like, again, going back to the point, if my vendors aren't moving me forward, they're holding me back. Yeah. So, um, they should scale and grow with you, right? Yeah, it's one of those things where like they should be innovating. I mean, if their if their software looks the same today as it did, you know, five years ago, I would say they're not innovating. Yeah. Um, but I, I if I'm evaluating my tech stack, I'm number one. I'm going to the cloud, and I know in some cases, you know, that's just it's it's a stretch. But at least what I'm doing is finding out, you know, what I can I can integrate with. Like and, and I'm putting stuff around it, you know, yeah. like a CRM, because no industry specific vendor is good at CRM. Period. But yeah. not. It's not their focus, you know. So what's well, traditionally it makes been your inventories, your and, accountings, and, your POS? Yeah, and I'm sorry, but like locally installed CRM tied to a workstation, not going to cut it in the 21st century. Won't cut it in 2017. Wouldn't cut it in 2007. Wouldn't cut it in 2000. Um, you know, so that's just, it's, it's, there's certain things that you just, you can't get away from. Um, kind of like POS. I mean, mobile POS yeah. is like the retail survey that we read that was done by Zebra. Uh, 86% of retail, or 93% of retailers are going to have mobile POS by like 2020. Yeah. Something Shoot, like that. I just read Macy's is toying around with the idea of giving all their associates. So, you know, all these different retailers. Removing the friction points to the sale. That's, that's what, what technology is. is all about. That is what it's, it's about. It's making it easier for people to buy from you because if you yeah. have like a mobile point of sale, you've got e signature, like you can transact on the showroom floor. You can transact if you have an e commerce site. Yeah. You can send someone a contract and they can pay you electronically. Yeah. Square can send out invoices. And, um, and, and all of this stuff, you may, like the process, many of you have already got down. Many of you are doing this process. It's just, you know, 
it's evolving to more of a 21st century atmosphere. Instead of a paper contract, it's a digital contract. Instead of a hard signature, it's a digital signature. Instead of collecting payment at a uh, workstation, cash register. cash register, you're taking a payment on your phone and swiping it. So the process isn't changing for you people, because I know what a lot of people are thinking right now is, you know, this is a big change. It's going to take a lot. My people won't do it, or my people won't, um, you know, want to do it, which is a whole other topic for another day. But yeah, you know, that's we'll, a that, leadership topic. Yeah, which we'll, we'll we'll dive into at another time. But you know, essentially, you know, you know, bringing it back to the conversation, you know, the process holistically doesn't change for you. You're just updating it, making it more efficient for a modern showroom experience. Yeah, and I think, you know, I've talked to a lot of other cloud vendors and, and like a lot of the funds we talk to and stuff like that, they just can't get over the number of on-prem solutions and like old school technology um, that's that's in place. And they're, you know, it's obviously things are, are kind of like ripe for disruption and all of that, but you really like we're, we're in this because we want to see people succeed. Yeah. Um, and it's really frustrating for us. Like, so if we sound like kind of irritated, like I am being irritated. Yeah. Like I'm irritated as hell because I have to listen to people tell me that they, that their, their business won't evolve. And I don't care about like, I could care less about getting the sale, but what's frustrating is like all these, everyone talks about small business. This is why small business is getting their shit kicked in. Yeah, in a lot of ways. I mean, because bigger players are adopting the technology, they're taking it to them. Yeah. Um, so when we hear that, oh well, my 1995 Windows server can't integrate with this, I'm out. It's like, man, like you're not, and that's great. It's it's the reason I don't care about getting the sale is because if we get a sale like that, they're going to go out of business, and we're a subscription business we make money when people renew, not when they sign up. Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, you, you've got to- You've, you've got to want to invest, invest back in your business. You've got you've to gotta innovate, you've got to think about your customers, you've got to stop thinking about, you know, what will Sally, my 25 year veteran salesperson, will use this, or my bookkeeper wants to keep a ledger on, you know, a typewriter, that's ridiculous. Like, yeah. you know, you've got to evolve, you've got to think about your customers, you've got to run your business, you can't let the and demons run the asylum. And the, 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 a modern business has these different technologies, has these yeah, different softwares, and they string them together to deliver this. So, you know, all of this API connections and things of nature, you know, with your vendors, you know, this is all designed now. These modern softwares are designed with these user-friendly interfaces that, that, that talk to each other, make this cohesive atmosphere to it's, help it's, your it's, people. It's, That's what it's all about. It's usually, to help your people. It's usually like going and requesting an API key and, draw, and like copying and pasting it. Yeah. Because this is not like programming. Like no. you don't need a developer. You don't need like an IT person. Yeah. Um, most of it's really like plug and play. And, 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 and to be frank, you know, this is going to take a lot of you outside of an industry vendor to achieve this result. In, in industry vendors only matter if they like are our best of breed. Yeah, that's the only. And thing there are some matter. out there. There, there are. Yeah, some. there are definitely like some, but you know, not many. And and it's kind of like you know the other thing too is a lot of the industry vendors will be you know, operating in this space, and then you get into the data concern. Yeah. Like, why do I want a competitor to have access to my data? <laughs> Which, I don't care what anyone says, like, that's what's happening. Um, yeah. So, I think, you know, industry specifics are great when it's actually the best thing for the function, but it's rarely the case where it's the best thing for, for yeah. like, the function. The problem, if it's not the best solution to the problem you're trying to solve, it's so, and if, they, and if they keep telling you it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, or if they're charging you five thousand dollars for access to an API token for like, access to your own data, that that That's is hilarious. a red flag. Uh, that is a hardcore red flag. You need to be asking some questions. Why you need to be reevaluating your technology stack? You know, you're not locked into that vendor. That vendor needs to be working for you. Well, and as you talk about technology evolving, I mean, the reality of what's happening is. Startups, cloud-born startups, they're moving into industry spaces and they're eating the legacy vendors. Yeah, and they're going to continue to. And so, you know, you don't want to hitch your, 
your wagon to the wrong horse <laughs> that's yeah. going to run out of gas. Um, you know, that, that, that's that Jack Welch quote. You know, if the rate of innovation on the outside exceeds the rate of innovation on the inside, the end is near. And yeah. For those of you who don't know Jack Welch, he's the former CEO of GE, which it's brilliant. You know, one of the greatest innovating uh, companies in the world. You know, to this day, it's been around for 150 years or whatever it is. Yeah. And they continue to innovate. You know, that's why they have staying power. It's not just because they're, you know, make billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, and, and they, re they, they, they reinvest well, back into the product. And when you look at e-commerce companies, people will talk about e-commerce, they'll be like, yeah, but most of the sales take place in brick and mortar. True, but like as e-commerce companies move into brick and mortar, there's going to be like an increasing threat. No, they said the same thing about Amazon back in 2000. Right, but right they're, they're venture funded. Like these modern companies, they're venture funded. They have investors who want returns. They demand growth. Yeah. And they're going to do whatever it takes because they're motivated. They're not sitting there, you know, kind of like, oh, I've been doing it this way, whatever. They're like, holy shit, how am I going to grow, you know, 50% month over month for the next 18 months? Um, they're going to do anything to do, uh, it takes to do that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, I think that the tech is like, Technology really is the backbone in a lot of ways. You know, you've got the processes you have to put in place, but if you don't have the systems to deliver the customer experience, the modern systems to, to make buying as easy as it is at the Apple Store, which, by the way, all mobile POS, they have CRM systems. For They'll years. call you if you don't buy from them for a while. For years. Um, if you're If you're not as easy to buy from as the Apple store, I would I would look at your tech stack really, really hard. Now, now, just kind of shifting a little bit, one of the cool benefits of, of you know, you've got a great process, you've been around for a while, it's cool, it's gonna you know, translate well to, to, to this modern software stack that you're gonna be looking at now. But one of the, you know, kind of ancillary benefits that many people don't think about and don't really realize until it's actually happening, when you get the systems in place, to really streamline those processes, it frees up a whole heck of a lot of time for you to do things like hang out with your family, go to your kid's soccer game, or hire another employee to come in there, or go close more business. Whatever it is, that is an ancillary benefit, because most of these, I, I know what you guys are going through, most of you guys spend so much time in your business, it's difficult to focus on your yeah, business. Yeah, and tech can really help you automate a lot of that. And, and the integration piece is just so important because as technology continues to evolve, you're gonna find software that you didn't even know you needed. Yeah. Like online review software. Like yeah. who would have thought you know, that you needed that? Um, consumers, all, that's where they're going. Yeah, all sorts, that's the trusted source. So like all sorts of things are gonna pop new up. word of mouth. And you're gonna wanna be able to like push and pull your information to and from different places. And the only way to do that is with modern technology. So, you know, think about like MailChimp, like if you had a system that you're capturing your sales data, getting in the MailChimp, you can keep everyone posted on that. And you've got, you know, an inventory system that is capable of linking up with your POS. Only way you're gonna really get that and have it push your inventory and allow you to, to like Google, to mm -hmm. Amazon, and allow you to do e-commerce is by having a modern inventory or modern, you know, e-commerce platform, yeah. um, something of that nature. So uh, the, the integrations and the ability to integrate is really the key to driving the customer experience forward. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, since I know not everyone is interested in growth, maybe it's they're interested in spending more time with their family or Worst case scenario, understand that someone down the street is going to be doing it. There's probably a Home yeah. Depot down the street. They're already doing all this. So yeah. it's kind of like this isn't about getting ahead. This is about keeping up. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, again, you know, whatever your goals are, whatever your motivation is, everybody's got something different. But technology doesn't exist to make your life more difficult. It exists to allow you to leverage it to make your life easier. And I think that's you know the big takeaway from this in terms of choosing a vendor or vendors that allow yeah, you're you. Probably to, gonna need vendors because there's yeah. not gonna be one that's gonna yeah do all this for you. But you know in, in, at the end of the day, you know choosing these vendors to you know speak to each other and enable you to free up your time to do whatever it may be, grow your business, hang out with your family, um, market, 
maintain where you're at, whatever it is, figure out what that is, talk to your current vendors, see where they're at, see if they talk to some other options for you. If, if you're not satisfied with those results or those answers or the time frame in which they can be delivered, there is a ton of technology out there now for whatever function that you're looking at to accomplish that it shouldn't be difficult for you guys to do a quick search, Google search and find two, three, four, five companies that will accomplish that that particular functionality. Yeah, and, and, and look, in, in chat, in, better way. chat into us. We will... Yeah. More than we'll, happy, you know. You know, obviously we have our own product, which, you know, we plug every now and then, but we, you know... No, no, no. We want like, to move, I'm, I'm, not, move I'm not talking about forward. our product. Like, if you need, if you want to talk about... Yeah, I know. That's what I was getting Yeah, to. inventory. <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about uh, inventory, accounting, POS... Um, all that stuff, e-commerce platforms, like we talked about last yeah. week, I still think that is huge. Been talking to our customers a lot about that. Most yeah. of them are really interested because it's like you're really like you're you're you, it's minimal effort and yeah. maximum return, um, and it Which drives all and it drives more foot traffic. Most yeah. importantly, um, if you want to talk about any of that, uh, whatever it is, whatever, you know, yeah, whatever whatever the software is, like, like I was saying, you know. We, we have our own product, but we also give advice, steer you in the right direction. You know, for us, it isn't always about our product. It's about helping you guys make decisions and inform you on what's available to you to, to help you in your business and, and hopefully prosper from there. So I think that's kind of, you know, summing it up. You know, the key takeaways are evaluate your technology stack. If it's not in the cloud, get in the cloud. Um, choose softwares that talk to each other via an API connection. Um, you know, if they charge of exorbitant amounts, red flag, I would question that. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, this is progress, uh, so adapt and you'll reap the boards. Yeah, it'll so. be, I mean, it'll be awesome. Like when you get everything set up and you've got like all your stuff oh. across the board and like get life, over that initial hump, yeah, right? Life is just easier. It's that gonna, initial hump of yeah. figuring all automate, this stuff out. Automate everything. You can yeah. use tech to automate everything. I would automate myself out of existence yeah. if I could. We tried to. Like, yeah, we're, I mean, we are actively yeah. trying to. Every day. So, every day. Um, so, yeah. So, get over that initial hump, that initial 30, 45 days, whatever it is, where you're implementing new technology and learning new technology and trust me it's a heck of a lot easier than what it sounds just get in there and start clicking some buttons yeah you're not, and, you're not gonna break it and and you know don't be afraid to move outside of like having a super narrow industry specific vendor because um, while they, they are great like make sure that you're thinking is this the best solution for my customers does this make it as easy as possible for my customers to do business with me. Because technology is a tool. That's the whole point of, of, of all of it. So I think that's the moral of pretty much everything we talk about. Probably. <laughs> Probably is. Uh, I'm uh, that one out. Exactly. No, I, 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 to me, to me it's, <laughs> it doesn't get more important than that. So. Yeah, so um, CRM all the time, to quote something I heard recently. All day, every day. Yeah, always be thinking about that. So Good deal. We can uh, wrap it up there, yeah. and we'll be back next week with who knows what. We'll uh, be back at our regular program schedule time of Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Yes. Uh, for everybody out there. But again, you know, uh, thanks for checking us out. That's Chase. I'm Kyle. Uh, check us out on all of our social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at the Lead Tool. Uh, otherwise, we're signing off. Thanks, everybody. Have a great uh, day. Check this out.